What's up boys and girls, Lambo here and in today's video I will show you the best game I played today. Game of the day of Try Hard Thursday stream, uh, which was a ZVT against Kalazur. Uh, relatively standard one as well. So um, yeah, I think there's a lot of stuff to learn from it. So let's jump right into it. So it was Pillars of Gold. First off, let's talk about the map since uh, the early game is just more or less normal. Um, Pillars, I think, is one of the more even maps. I think, to be honest, it's 50-50 um, because early on it's a little bit hard to defend tank, tank pushes, but later on in the game I think it's really, really good for Zerg. It's also a great map for counter-attacks. The reason it is good for Zerg later on is because of how far away the bases are from another, which initially favors Terran because Terran is the, the race that at first tries to deny bases, but later on in the game, as a Zerg, you want to split up the Terran army and try to kill the most exposed bases, which is very, very hard for Terran to keep up, since the Zerg is a, such a mobile army in comparison. So at the start here, we're just scouting around the map pretty much for um, for proxy rexes. We always try to cover everything with uh, the, fir the first two overlords. I did not scout the two far away locations, but the second overlord returns to the front of our natural relatively early on, so we would see super far away proxies coming with the SV and the marine, and then I trust myself to still hold it with a drone pull. We're going for uh, one of the more standard openings right now, which is you go up to 21, then you start two queens, two pairs of links at 27, you start one more drone at the natural, one overlord in the main, and then you take the hatchery at 300 minerals. So also very standard um, opener that you guys can copy. Obviously, I will include the replay in the description below. So the Reaper comes in here and you kind of just want to pull away the, the herd drone because cancelling a building obviously also costs some money. Now we try to start speed the moment we have the 100 gas because we lost some mining, it's a little bit late and also because the map is pillars. And now all we need to make sure is we get our creep tumors up nicely. So at 32 we go for an overlord, usually I make the overlord in the main and one extra drone from the natural, but I kind of just press the drone button without selecting the larva, that's what usually not what I do. At uh, 32 we make one more queen and now we're just droning. And we have one overlord in a position where you can see the Hellion sleeve, so you can see the exact Hellion timing. And also in the perfect position to sacrifice it into your opponent's base. This build has a purposeful supply block on 44, by the way, since the hatchery will finish up and give us some some extra supply. So uh, that's kind of just part of the build order, to be honest. And we're just producing queens more or less consistently. I think this is what most TVZ openers boil down to. You just make queens, you drone up all three mineral lines, and then you take extra gases slowly, extra hatcheries. You get a lair, a bailing nest, and upgrades for melee. That's usually how you open against Terran. So here he tried... I, I, I realized he saw the creep tumor, but he didn't get any damage done on it, so... I did not even try to go there, because then he wanted to use the Queens to line up the shot on the creep tumor, whereas... for the, the Reaper would have died itself if you, if you tried to kill a full HP creep tumor with it. Especially because the Queens can shoot at it as well. Then we go in, we see... a starport with a tech lab on it that is spinning, so it looks like a Banshee for now. Usually the timing for 2cc Banshee is... the sport timings is 430. We have a relatively big supply block here at 66, which is really bad. And I forgot to put one of the overlords to the right location of my third base. Now we took the forward third because it makes it easier to defend tank pushes. And you can see me being very frustrated here at being supply block at 66 out of 66 for so long. So yeah, this, this early game was not perfect, even though we just lost like two drones against the Hellions. Uh, we we'll obviously lose some mining time. Just be patient there with the drones. It doesn't matter if they don't mine as long as you don't lose them. Uh, you always would rather just lose some mining time. 
compared to uh, losing the drones, which... Um, which makes sense, I think. And then we go for Binning Speed, because we went for early lair, and then we're going for Gas, double Evo Chamber for now, we're starting with Ling Bane only. Now, Kalazor doesn't have high ground vision here, he just heard the sound of the rocks being under attack, and then he just hit the rock, which is really cool. Uh, so he actually managed to hurt some Zerglings, but we're pretty fire already with the rock clearing process, so I, I don't really want to risk losing any Zerglings for it. Always make sure to try and kill the important rocks. The most important ones are on Romanticide, obviously, in front of your third base, if you take the forward third as you should. Then on Oxide, the obvious one. Um, on this map, this one is very important. On Light Shade, the one next to your forward third as well. It might not seem as obvious that that one is very important on Light Shade, but it's, it also is. So whenever you see the Hellions exact, the Hellions exact location, make sure to use your links to attack those rocks, unless the Hellions are threatening and like a run by, you know. So at this point we want to join up to around 74. Uh, if I had a better early game I would have went up to 80, but because of the supply block, I'm uh, kind of just going up to a lower drone count. And then we're just going Ling Bane off of 4 gas, my plan here initially was to go Ling Bane into Ultra. Now is usually the time where the first two metal legs leave, but it's straight up literally to build if they don't go tanks, which he did go tanks, so I scouted not only the fact that he did go for tanks, but also his units are still at home, which means he is gonna go for delayed tank timing, 100%. So at this point I know that tank attack is coming, which means after the drones that I made for um, the couple of drones that I made for my forward base, I will only make Ling Bane right now. At this point I'm choosing to run by with the bailings that I made already. Bailing run bys can be very efficient against the third base mineral lines. Um, whereas Zergling run bys very often will deny a lot of mining time, but not get the kills that you could get with the bailing run bys. Um, this is because the series have a, quite a bit of HP, and especially if you don't go for double upgrades, the Zerglings don't do that much damage to them. So, yeah, I, I don't have 1 1 yet, which means I went for a bailing, so I was a little bit surprised at how little SVC he had. But it was a 2cc opening, we need to remember. So we did some decent damage, now we're setting up the flank, he scouted the flank, it's very important to pre-split your units. And the way you want to take these fights is you come from the back and the front at the same time, so you can't kite back. This will usually force the lift off and you can just clear up the tank, the tanks afterwards. So you can see we're going in at the same time. We try to move command the bailings forward. And we get a decent um, clear. Now our upgrades are also done and we can start spending more gas on our upgrades. At this point I'm feeling pretty good about our position in the game because I saw his SCV con was very little and I also killed a bunch. So yeah, overall nice position, we're going for a 2-2. Starting another run by, this is what Pillars is so good for. Very very open bases, and this is what I meant with you don't really get the kills with the Zerglings. Um, at this point it's one plus one Zerglings against plus one armor or SCVs, either way. Very very hard to get actual kills out of these run bys. I think I just made an extra run of drones. I also did scout with a Zergling uh, counterattack because I checked for a 4CC. I know there is no 4CC yet, which means I'm in a really good position. Uh, the 4CC will pretty much always be built either next to the third base or in between natural and third because you wanna you want it to not float for too long. It always it depends a little bit on which fourth base your opponent is planning to take. Alright, so uh, yeah, you just saw I hovered over the top right to see how many drones I have exactly. 83 seems nice. Now I see the fact that there are Widow Mines. So my plan initially was to go Ultra. I also figured that he might be Aedrexing, so I just made a lot of units, mostly. Um, but since I scouted the Widow Mines, I will go into Lurkers instead. I don't think I made the Hydrodon yet, but it is noted in my mind that my opponent, in fact, did transition from the tank into the Widow Mine play. So the, the big weakness of these tank pushes, which you might not initially realize, is that the opponent spends a lot of gas on tanks, which means his second factory is gonna be a lot later than usual. And on top of that, he uh, it, it delays his uh, the rest of his production as well. So you, usually they get an earlier 4 CC, then if you go for like 8, eight aliens and then a lot of tanks, so in, in general it is a relatively committed one, so even though my drone count wasn't great, 
Um, I think I am in a very good position here. Yeah, now we're just getting up the extra geysers for lurkers. If you want to go up to lurkers, you want to go up to 10 gas. If you're safe, if you if you don't feel safe, going 8 gas at first might be better. Uh, if, if, if it's a tank push, maybe go Ling Bane Hydra with just very few Hydras and then some Vipers of 7 gas at first. And then take the extra gases after you crush a push. But since I know I'm against Widowmites, I can already take the extra geysers. Now I'm starting the Lurker then a little bit too late, but that's fine. Some sport crawlers, once you get the money on the edges of the bases, make it a lot harder actually to maneuver around your base. With Medivex and Liberators as well, obviously. Uh, same with uh, Hudo Mine drops. In general, it just makes the Tyrant have to actually look at where they're dropping. Which uh, Tyrant players always think they have great multitasking, but actually being the offensive multitasker, like doing run buys, doing War Prism drops, um, same goes like for Broach Borrow movement or something. No matter what you do, if you're the attacker, you always use less multitasking than the defender. Because you can decide when your drop goes in. So making this, this, uh, this amount of spores makes it so the opponent, even though it might not necessarily kill anything, it requires your opponent to micro and actively look at it and spend a lot of attention on micro these drops. So making spores in general is also better than spines. Um, very often your units are fast enough to defend the drops eventually, You're, you should have everything connected with creep. So yeah, making spores in general is good. Now we're going from behind, and he kind of gets away there. I wish I wish I could have gotten a surround there when he was on the ramp. That would have been brilliant, but as it stands, that fight was decent for him, I think. Now we also have the spores for this one liberated. We did not make any Hydras yet. I wanted to clear the first push first with Ling Bane. And then transition to the Lurkers afterwards, which is still the case. Now we get a bunch of marines here, there was a slightly sloppy pickoff, but I knew I could go in there because I knew all the widow mines were depleted. So that's why I went for the direct fight there. I also reborrowed some of my spores to my main immediately. I forgot about to talk about that, but it's pretty important, especially on a map where he can drop from your third or fourth base location directly into your main, because that means that his attack path or, or his uh, rotating path for his attacking units is considerably shorter than your uh, than the path that your defensive units need to need to take. Now I actually wanted to just send a couple of Ling Bane to the top because I knew it was just two Medivax and I actually was aware that these uh, units were still here. This is why I'm looking a little bit annoyed <laughs> because I was very pissed at myself more or less at the fact that I was out of position there but um, yeah. Whenever you see a drop don't just 1A there just select a couple of units press ALT and then whatever second hotkey you use, or third, or fourth, or fifth, or whatever. And just send a couple of units there to not be out of position. Especially on higher level, usually there's going to be a second attack. You don't just send two Medivex while nothing else is going on, because... On higher levels, you will just expect your opponent to be able to defend that. At this point, I know he went for Widow Mines for the longest time, which means his tank count shouldn't be that high, so I just try to get out up as many lurkers as possible. I mainly detonated some bailings there so the wooden mines wouldn't shoot. Uh, just making sure. And now we just want to start attacking with the lurkers. Since I have a pretty good idea that there are no units on the map, I kind of just take everything to the front more or less. And I go in two with, with two armies, one of them just being lurkers. Uh, if you have this amount of lurkers and your opponent does not have any tanks, you can just run in happily. And once you get into a position, it's going to be super hard to clear up. I know he needs to dislodge his position eventually, so I wait for him to engage, and then I come in from the back for the killing move. And that was a pretty standard Ling Bane into Lurker game, uh, with the intention initially to just go into Ultras, because I was expecting more tank play. But then since he transitioned into Mines, I went for a react reactionary Lurker, even though I didn't go Hydra Ling Bane, I kind of just used all my Hydras to morph into Lurkers, because it's good against low tank counts. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, you can, you guys can obviously always subscribe um, to help me out. And one more thing that you guys can do is follow me on Instagram. I've never showed this out on my channel, but we've just gotten a new puppy. It's a Australian Shepherd puppy. And his name is Loki, and he's nine weeks old. And if you want to see videos or pictures of him, I always post them in my stories on Instagram, so you can follow me there on Lambo SC2. 
Either way, guys, thanks for watching and see you in the next video tomorrow with a free MMR Friday guide. Bye bye.